Alright, so here's the thing. What if Antonio Pierce knows something we don't? I mean, the Raiders are sitting at 2-7 and seven right now, and let's be honest, it's been rough. Fans are frustrated, and it feels like nothing's clicking. The offense is struggling, the defense is hit or miss, and some of the decisions, man, they've just been... confusing. But here's what's weird. You've also felt it. Pierce showed up at his last press conference looking calm. Like, really calm. And confident, too. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Does he know something about the team's future that we don't? Is this all part of some bigger plan? Anyway, in today's video, we're gonna dig into all of it. We'll talk about Pierce's leadership, some of the head-scratching moves this season, and maybe what's next for the Raiders. So, yeah, stick around. This might not be the season we wanted, but could it actually be setting up something way bigger? Let's find out. What's up, buddies? Welcome back. If you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We cover all AFC West news here on this channel. So, let's just call it what it is. The Raiders' season so far has been a mess. Sitting at 2-7, it's hard to find many bright spots. The offense? Yeah, it's been inconsistent. Some games, they show flashes of potential, but most of the time, it's like they're stuck in neutral. And the defense? I mean, sure, they've been better than the offense, but even they've had their moments where you're just shaking your head. And here's the thing. It's not just the losses. It's how they're losing. The games weren't exciting or even competitive for the most part. Like, where's the fire? Where's the spark? It feels like the team is just going through the motions, and that's tough for fans to watch week after week. Now, injuries have definitely played a part. We can't ignore that. But, you know, it's more than just that. Some of the coaching decisions this season, man, they've been hard to understand. Whether it's poor clock management, weird play calling, or just not making adjustments when they're needed, it's been frustrating to say the least. And honestly, you gotta feel for the fans. Raider Nation deserves better than this. But here's the silver lining. This bye week gave the team a chance to reset. So the big question now is, can they turn things around? Or at the very least, show some fight? Guess we're about to find out. Last year, when he stepped in as interim head coach, it really felt like the team rallied around him. He was this fresh, energetic leader, a former player who just got it. You know, the kind of guy you'd want to follow into battle. And honestly, a lot of us thought he'd be the one to lead the Raiders into this new chapter. But this season? It's been rough. Like, really rough. Pierce looks like he's in over his head sometimes. The clock management? Not great. Some of the play calling decisions? Honestly, they've been head scratchers. Remember that game where they punted on fourth down past midfield? Yeah, that one still stings. And the two minute drills? Let's just say they're not exactly a strength right now. Here's the thing though. Coaching in the NFL is no joke. Pierce is still young in his role and well, mistakes are part of the process. But at the same time, you can't help but wonder, is he learning from these missteps? Or is this just how it's gonna be? And then there's the big elephant in the room, his job security. I mean, nobody really knows what the team's long-term plan is with him. Coach contracts are usually kept pretty quiet, so we don't even know how much leeway he's got. But judging by his attitude in press conferences, Pierce doesn't seem too worried. He's calm, collected, and honestly, way more relaxed than you'd expect for a coach leading a 2-7 to seven team. Makes you think, right? Maybe he knows something we don't. But some of his decisions have had fans shaking their heads this season, starting with the quarterback situation. So Pierce is sticking with Gardner Minshew as the starter. And honestly, at this point, why? The guy's been a turnover machine and his accuracy? It's all over the place. We've seen enough to know he's probably not the future of this team. Here's where it gets even more frustrating. The Raiders had their bye week. A perfect time to try something different, like giving Desmond Ritter a shot. He's younger, and sure, he's unproven. But when you're 2-7, what do you have to lose? Let the guy get some first-team reps, see what he's got. But nope, they're sticking with the same script. Now, to be fair, it's not like Ritter's guaranteed to be the next big thing. But, come on, wouldn't it be worth trying? At least show the fans you're looking for solutions, not just going through the motions. And it's not just the quarterback decisions that have people frustrated. There have been other questionable calls too, like some of the play calling on offense. Luke Getze's departure as offensive coordinator might shake things up, but will it be enough? The team's responsibilities shifted to Scott Turner, who's also coaching the quarterbacks now. That's a lot to juggle, and whether it works or not, well, we'll have to see. So, yeah, the coaching choices this season haven't exactly inspired confidence, but maybe, just maybe, 
these moves are all part of some bigger plan that we just can't see yet. Or, you know, maybe not. Only time will tell. Discussing players is important because there's actually some stuff to feel a little optimistic about. Finally, right? First off, rookie center Jackson Powers Johnson. This guy's been stepping up big time. With Andre James out, Jackson's taken over at center, and honestly, he's been solid. For a rookie, that's no small feat, especially behind an offensive line that's had its fair share of struggles. And then there's tight end Michael Mayer. He's back after missing a chunk of the season, and let me tell you, this dude has the potential to be a game changer. He was a steal in last year's draft, a true tight end who can block, catch, and make big plays in the middle of the field. We haven't seen much of that 12 personnel offense the Raiders were hyped about before the season, but with Mayer healthy, maybe that changes. Here's the thing though, this is the time to lean into the younger guys. The playoffs are pretty much out of the picture, so why not give the rookies and other young players meaningful reps? Let's see what they've got. I mean, it's not like sticking with the same lineup that has been working, right? Anyway, Mayer and Jackson aren't the only ones to watch. There's talk of finally seeing more action from other promising talents, and honestly, that's what this team needs. Use the rest of the season to figure out who's part of the future and who isn't. If nothing else, it gives fans something to look forward to, and right now, they could really use that. This week's matchup against the Miami Dolphins is shaping up to be a big test for the Raiders, and it's going to be tough. The Dolphins might be dealing with their own ups and downs, but don't let that fool you. They're still a dangerous team. Their offense? It's loaded. Tyreek Hill, Devonna Kane, and Tua Tagovailoa can light up a scoreboard when they're on. Now, here's the thing. The Dolphins have been a little inconsistent too, especially at quarterback. But last week, they managed to grind out a win against the Rams, and you know they're hungry to build on that. The Raiders? They're walking into this game as clear underdogs and for good reason. Miami's offense has the firepower to drop 30 points on you in a heartbeat. So, what does that mean for the Raiders? Well, it's a chance to prove something. Coming off the bye, this game will tell us if anything has really changed. Will the coaching adjustments make a difference? Can the defense step up and slow down one of the most explosive offenses in the league? Or, at the very least, can the Raiders show some fight and give fans a reason to believe in this team again? Pierce has been looking unusually calm and confident lately. Not exactly the vibe you'd expect from a coach whose team is struggling this much, and that makes you wonder, does he already know he's safe for another year? Maybe the higher-ups have already decided to give him time to rebuild the team without the pressure of immediate results. Now, this might explain some of the moves, or, you know, the lack of them. Sticking with Gardner Minshew as the quarterback, not making drastic roster changes, it's like they're focused more on evaluating what they've got than trying to scrape together wins. And let's not forget the draft. With the way this season is going, the Raiders are in prime position to land a high pick, maybe even a franchise quarterback. If that's the plan, then, yeah, it kind of makes sense to sacrifice this season for a better shot at success down the road. But hey, that's all speculation. What we do know is that Raider Nation deserves answers. If this is all part of a master plan, the fans need to see some kind of progress, something to give them hope that better days are coming. Because let's be real, patience only goes so far when your team's losing week after week. Anyway, it's a tough spot for the team, but the potential for a turnaround is there. If not this season, then maybe next. But here's the real question for Raider Nation. Are you willing to wait? Let me know what you think in the comments. Is Antonio Pierce the guy to lead this team into the future, or should the Raiders start fresh? Either way, stay tuned. We've got a lot to talk about as this story unfolds.